By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have more magic uh, for you from the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam, the tournament there, the, uh, the old school tournament. And we have Martin who is going to take on Robert. And Martin is playing a four color spice deck and Robert is going to play an ATOC deck. So before we get to the match, I'll just quickly go through both decks to give you an idea of what they are playing with. Let's start by looking at Martin's list. Um, he's playing with a four color spice. So he's playing with every color except for green. And basically if we look at his list, I think I see a full set of power and he just wants to play cool creatures and, and win. And he plays with a Mahamoti Jin, he plays with a Shivan Dragon. But my personal favorite uh, of this list is Sol Kanar, the Swamp King. It's really cool, it's a 5-5 five, five, uh, creature and hopefully we'll see it on the board in the upcoming matchup. His opponent Robert is playing with an Atok deck and when you think of Atoks you think of lightning bolts, chain lightnings, they're all in there, copper tablets, they're all in there, uh, Orcish Mechanics is in there as well, but there are also some very interesting uh, picks in this deck, very original picks that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, for instance, he's playing with an Ornithopter, so that's going to be very interesting, and he's also uh, playing with some other zero casting cost um, artifacts and he has a Mox Ruby in the, here as well and he's also playing with an Aladdin and Aladdin is a card from the Arabian Nights that allows you to take over artifacts so that looks really really funny so he can take over an artifact and then uh, basically sacrifice it with his Orcish mechanics and deal two damage to his opponent so that that's um, I mean that's a very interesting and and fun uh, com combo there. So hopefully Robert you can pull that off. Looking forward to seeing that in action. So let's now continue on to game number one. Game number one with Robert on the play. And let's see what's gonna happen. There's a mountain into a black vice. That's a very good start for the ATOG deck. A black vice, another one of those uh, staple cards for the black vice deck. Uh, for the sorry for the ATOG deck. So what can Martin do? He wants to get rid of some cards, preferably wants to get rid of that black vice. Oh, and this is gonna help. Black Lotus, and that's so cool. A black lotus into a royal assassin. What a nice play. I always like the royal assassin that it's standing there in front of the pub. Oh, and this is also funny, that zero casting cost card, and I kind of for, I think it's from the dark and but let's see there's a chain lightning first on the royal assassin and and what it does it's it's a card from the dark zero casting cost when you sacrifice it it heals like half of the damage rounded down something like that if you know the card name uh, please let me know in the comments below but let's first focus here is there a bloodlust coming here from Robert so only top three is attacking and well nothing happens and there's a disenchant on the black vice at the end of turn. And there's a plateau there. So a lot of red and black and white mana there for Martin, but he's missing his islands. And Robert only has two mountains, but he doesn't need much with his ATOC deck. But there's not a lot happening. And there's a copper tablet. And that is slowly going to tick away. Copper tablet deals one damage Oh, okay, there's a disenchant. I wanted to say deals one damage in the upkeep of that player. And there is a Suchi here. A 4-4. Four, four. And do are we going to see an Atok here? No, it's a Shatter. So Shatter takes care of the Suchi. Another dual land there. And there is a Mishra's Factory into an Orcish Mechanics. So the Orcish Mechanics is the, the creature we talked earlier about. You can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then you can deal two damage to any target. So you can start throwing those artifacts over there. And there's a Spirit Link on there and that's very nice because when you sacrifice an artifact, it's the Orcish Mechanic that deals two damage to you. So in case of the Spirit Link, it is not going to deal any damage at all. So it's quite an interesting uh, solution there. And there's not a lot of, actually no enchantment removal in red alone. So 
He'll need a Chaos Orb, for instance, to get rid of that Spirit Link. But he's playing another Orcish mechanic, so that's also a solution. And there's a Lightning Bolt here from Martin. And there's <laughs> there is the Swamp King. So I was hoping to see the Swamp King. And it is a 5-5 five -five for Swamp Walk. And I believe you gain one life when you cast a black spell. I'm not quite sure. But it's a nice creature here. And there's a Chain Lightning first. And there's a Lightning Bolt. So he's spending two cards here on one. A classic two for one. And when you're playing Atak, you kind of want to spend your, your Lightning Bolts and Chain Lightnings on your op opponent, obviously. But hey, if you have to do it, you have to do it. And there's an Ancestral Recall, and he's drawn three cards now. Uh, so it's looking good for Martin, and look at all that mana. So what can he do with all that mana? There is an Atok on the other side. And he seems to be thinking now. Passing turn. And let's see what Robert can do. He's looking at that card again. You don't see it often. Uh, tap for three, and this is nice, a nice play here. And of course, we'll see some instant action there. There's a Psy Blast on the Atok. He can sack to save it. We'll need to sack two, though. And he does it. He sacks two artifacts to save the Atok. And uh, Martin takes two damage. But it's a nice play. After Ancestral Recall, it's very nice to, um, to play Wheel of Fortune. And of course, when you're playing aggro and... You are playing aggro when you're playing Atok. Um, you you want to have a full hand, so this is great. And remember that Atok is now um, a 5-6, so you can hit him now for 5, and all of a sudden Martin is, is down to 9 life. And Robert is still on 20 here. And there's another Atok. It's not necessarily what you want. But it's better than nothing. Two creatures on the board. He's on nine life. And maybe he can play some artifacts, start feeding them. And, rem and remember, when you have red, of course, you have so much uh, direct damage to your uh, disposal. So it's going to be interesting. And Martin needs a big creature here. Maybe the Mahamoti Jin we talked earlier about. He seems to think here what to do, what to do. And it's difficult. I mean, he has a full grip of cards, but does he have anything useful? Maybe thinking about casting a Time Twister. And there's a tap for four. And there's a recall. So that is why he was looking, uh, going through his graveyard. Bring back a red card there, bring back a lightning bolt and taking care of one Atok. And that's very expensive because you lose like three cards to get rid of one Atok. And there is a disintegrate, getting rid of another Atok. That one is removed there. So it shouldn't go in the graveyard. Don't think that it matters that much. And I like this altar here on, uh, on Robert's card. Now it looks like another Mox Ruby, but it's just an altar. And the Mox Pearl there from Martin also is uh, is altered, as you can see. And there's a Ball Lightning. Ooh, and that's eight damage. It brings him down to one life. And when you're playing against a red Atak deck and you're on one life, oh, your chances are very, very slim. And that's the downside there. Maybe, maybe Martin played a little bit too aggressive with that Lightning Bolt on... Um, on the Atok, on the other hand, he couldn't know that Robert was playing with Bull Lightnings. I always find it odd, by the way, that you can Lightning Bolt a Bull Lightning. Oh, and this is a nice play, a huge mind twist here. So maybe Martin can find his way back into this match. Robert is now empty-handed. Oh, but of course he has the he has the Mistress Factory. A Hercules Recall. <laughs> okay, okay. So he needs to draw an answer now. He needs to find an answer. Disenchant, Strip Mine, Lightning Bolt, or or another Mistress Factory. That will do. Uh, and will Robert attack? 
because now he can still trade because the Mishra's factory still has summoning sickness and that's exactly what he's going to do. So they're going to trade. He cannot pump uh, his own Mishra's factory because it still has summoning sickness. And there is another solution to the uh, to the threat that's no longer on the board. And there's a chain lightning and ooh, there's a spell blast. And it works. It works. So the spell blast resolves so he's still safe. So Martin is still alive, hanging on a threat on one life against a deck with lightning bolts and chain lightnings. And there's another mountain there from Robert, and there's a Mox Ruby, the real one, and there's an Aladdin. And uh, this is so cool. This is the card we talked earlier about from Arabian Nights, so he can use it to uh, steal his Icy Manipulator. And I think they're now discussing what is happening with that spirit link. And these are also rules that are a little vague to me. Because um, you could say, okay, uh, spirit link says any damage done by this creature is life instead. And I see, I see there's somebody coming, so they're discussing this call. Let's see what's going to happen. And when he activates him and, and Martin dies, then we, we know how it, how it works. And when he doesn't do it, we also know how it works. So he's shooting the, uh, the Mox Ruby and it works. So uh, Martin is uh, dead. At least he's not dead, but he lost game one. His deck is dead or, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, if, you, uh, if you know that rule and how it works with the Spirit Link, the Orcish mechanics, um, and shooting artifacts at your opponent... Please leave a comment below because I'm curious to, to know how that exactly works. My understanding is that the damage resolves first and then you get life from the spirit link. So that would mean that uh, since Martin uh, would go to minus one, he would first get the damage and afterwards get the life. So he would be dead before he can get the life from, from the spirit link. I'm not sure. So uh, please feel free to comment and, and let me know. I'm, I'm not an expert here. Um, for now, they're going to their sideboards and we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two with that win from Robert. So that means that Martin is on the play and he'll need to win this one to have a chance to win this match. And he's starting with a Mishra's Factory. There's a Black Vice again here from uh, Robert. Not as strong when you're on the draw. But still, it deals 2 damage, and he can always sack it to his Orcish Mechanics later in the game, or uh, sack it to his Atok. And there's an Ornithopter, and there's a Chain Lightning on Martin, so he goes to 15, and there's no second land here, and a Disenchant here from Martin on the Black Vice. And an attack with the Mistress Factory, so Robert is going down to 18. And he seems to be missing land here, and that is a problem, of course. You don't need a lot of mana with Atok, the Atok deck, but I think two or preferably even three would be ideal. And I wonder if Robert is playing um, Blood Moon in his sideboard. And there's the Swamp King again. Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping to, to at least see it once, and here it is for the second game in a row. So hopefully it can stay alive. At least hopefully for, for Martin. Of course, Robert needs to now deal with this. At least he's found a mountain. And is he willing to spend a chain and a bolt or, or two bolts? Okay, interesting. He plays a Winter Orb. Of course, a good card in an Atok build because you don't need a lot of mana. And especially against Martin's deck here, um, who's who plays with like big creatures, so he wants a lot of mana. But he probably also boarded in some sideboard hate there, so I'm curious to see how it's going to work out. Attacks here with the Swamp King and the Ornithopter Chum Blocks. Of course, no match for the mighty Swamp King. And there is a Mishra's Factory on the board. Oh, interesting, and Chaos Orb. 
and again a spell blast. And in this case, the spell blast is it's it's much better than the power sink. And it's not. I think spell blast is 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 a bit of an underestimated um, counter spell. I think a lot of people prefer spell uh, power uh, prefer power sink, and I mean they underestimate spell blast. Um, it depends on the goal of your deck. If you want to defend your creatures, for instance, or just your spells on the board, your permanents, then the spell blast is usually better. If you have some synergy um, with the power sink, so with the fact that your opponent has to tap out, then obviously power sink is better. I mean, think of or if you always have more mana available uh, because you're playing with mana flare for instance then a power sink is, is more more powerful so it really depends on on what kind of deck you're building and in the meanwhile we're seeing soul canard doing some serious damage here and robert is down to nine life martin is down to 13 and this soul canard is really doing some business here the swamp king is really being the king of this game so far and Robert is on four life. He needs to do something here. And there's her chain. Will there be the bolt again? And there's the bolt. Oh, but they... Oh, he's countering it. A blue elemental blast. And that's the game. So Martin wins this one. And it is 1-1. One, one. And that Solkanar kind of took the game. This is so cool. Solkanar is really the king of this game. Uh, it's 1-1. It's one, one. And uh, we're going to continue now to game number three. Game number three with uh, Robert on the play. And since he has an aggressive deck, I would say he's a slight favorite here. Opening with a basic mountain and an ornithopter. And an underground sea there from Martin. And a strip mine. Is he going to strip? No, he's going to play an Ankh of Mishra. And that means for every land that's being played out now, um, you receive two damage. And that counts for both players. And there's an Ancestral Recall there, end of turn. No, there's not. Or yes, there is. Okay, there's an Ancestral Recall. <laughs> it was a little unclear. So three cards for Martin. Uh, it's probably going to take two damage here from the Ankh of Mishra. Exactly. He's playing a land. There is a Plateau. And look, beautiful lands there. I think they're beta. I can't see. A beautiful black border dual lands. And something will hit the board here. There is a time walk. So an extra turn. And Martin has to discard. He's discarding an icy manipulator. And he's going into his extra turn. Playing a disenchant over the Ankh of Mishra. Before playing the factory. That's a smart move there. Because that saves him two damage. And it's looking good here now for Martin. And there is an Atok here for Robert and does he have mana issues again I mean I hope not at least he has two mana now but it's not ideal there's a tap here what's gonna happen there's a demonic tutor the interesting thing about uh, Martin's deck is I was looking at it again it's almost a singleton deck there are only a few cards that uh, he plays double so it's just a very entertaining um, funny bunch of cards and we will see Solkanar, the Swamp King, again. Like in that game two, that was just brutal, the work that Solkanar did. And there's a Juzum Jin. We haven't even talked about the Juzum Jin yet. I believe he only plays with one Juzum Jin as well. Really nice. I mean, casting a Juzum Jin with the Black Lotus, that always seems to be, you know, very old school, very much in theme of today. And there's his third land for Robert. So can he do something? I would say at least play another artifact. Okay, there's an orcish mechanic, so probably there's nothing in his hand here. I can get a sneak peek there. I saw a red card. Couldn't really see it cle clearly, but I think what he needs um, is an artifact because then he can sack it to the Atok and he can pump the Atok. This is interesting, a lightning bolt on the orcish mechanics and a blue elemental blast on the Atok. And his blue elemental blast is... Deadly, and of course when you're playing with four colors like Martin is, you have a lot of choices uh, in your sideboard. And this is a big hit, seven damage here for Robert, so he's going down to 13. And this is looking problematic now. He 
he needs to do something. And what I always miss when I'm playing with red, and that's probably because I play a lot with, with white, is a sword to plows here or a ted or, or just something that can take care of a creature. Because now you again need a chain and a lightning bolt to take care of the Jusum Jin, and that means that you're using two cards to get rid of one. So then you're going through your resources very quickly. And there's a tap here, no. Of course the damage from the Jusum Jin there. Uh, so Martin is now on 16. Is he going to activate? He's in doubt. <laughs> He's afraid. Oh, there's a spirit link. Nice. Always nice that combination with the spirit link uh, on creatures that damage you during the upkeep. And there's another big swing again. That means five life for Martin and seven damage here for Robert. And this is not looking good. I mean, he's on six. I, the one thing I'm, I'm surprised about with the Orcish mechanics is that it's just a 1-1. One, one. You would think a card for, for three mana, and being a big creature, it's a big orc, you would think at least it would be a 2-2 two, two, or maybe a 1-3. I think, personally, I would have felt that a 1-3 would make sense since he's in defense, he's, you know, he has the catapult that he's um, maintaining. Ah, and there's a mana barbs. And that means for every land that's getting tapped for mana, the opponent loses one life. And this is um, a card that's usually used against um, decks that play with um, that play with Circle of Protection Red. Because then when you pay the one mana to prevent the damage with the Circle of Protection, you also get one damage from the mana barbs. But let's go to the combat phase here. And we see a Divine Offering being cast on the Ornithopter. So before blockers are declared, because Robert wanted to jump block there, and in response he's sacking the... Um, oh yeah, he's sacking the Ornithopter to deal two damage to the Mistress Factory, but Martin is saying, okay, then in response, I use my Maze of If to untap my factory, making it a 3-3, and it does mean it gets out of battle. So it, it, it does mean that Robert survives, but no, he's shaking the hand. Uh, he cannot do it here, and after that win in the first game, uh, it kind of went downhill for uh, Robert. So, Martin, congratulations, you won this one with 2-1. Cool decks again, so I'm looking forward to, to see um, the game played in round number 4, because the decks so far have been, uh, or in round number 5, I'm sorry, So because the decks so far have been very, very entertaining and a lot of fun to watch. So, thank you, Martin and Robert, for this game, and congratulations, Martin, on the victory. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you would like to see more old school magic, you can click on the links that are appearing right now, or you can take a look on the channel Timmy the Sorcerer for more old school games. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>